Da ist er. Ist er gar Morning, morning, morning. Find your seats. A lot of seats in front. Come forward and do. Hello, morning, Clive. Morning, Brain. Morning, morning, morning. Come, Michael. Hello, Samuel N. Said Gary. <laughs> okay, good morning. Morning. Good morning. Mora. Say hello to my car. Hello. Not to you. We're in order. Bye, bye, bye. Hello, hello, hello. I'm going to talk about the stemming. For every new entrekker that comes, En wat my nooit vir koffie sal ek hulle koffie betaal, maar julle gaan vir my die geld gee. Is dit 'n deal? <laughs> is dit 'n deal? Elke elke nuwe persoon sal weer gaan koffie drink gee julle vir my geld, dan koop ek vir hulle koffie. Dit is 'n deal. Oké. Okay. Dankie. Ons sal dit net die leer. My nie is hier nie, ons sal dit net die leer. Welkom julle almal. Ehm um, Afkondigings, ons moet Arends Frans, ons moet Arends begin braai. Waar sit jy? Jy moet Arends <laughs> Charlie Sheen, we must always begin to pray. We must always say, "When I pray, as a as a as a whole community, we come together on a Friday evening and we pray." We haven't had one month end. Usually month end, but also this one are you? Great steaks, Craig. Okay, come, those great steaks. We must eat by any kerk. If you want anything, you can contact me. There's uh, the church hotline or hotline, <laughs> church line, or anything you need or anything. You are welcome to contact me. You can uh, do it anonymous or, yeah, invite me for coffee or whatever or whatever you need or for prayer or whatever is necessary in your house. Let's go to the next one. Let's see a bit for your store. Net pot gitter alles nie nie van ochtend ter net hulle. Is hulle hulle is op vakantie. Letitia Brooks, see so, Letitia. Nee, ek trust jou nie. <laughs> ah, die kan ek. You. <laughs> Julle is witnesses hier. <laughs> um, is al enige hevelikse herdenkings? Um, anniversaries. Any anniversaries I'm missing? Any birthdays I'm missing? <laughs> Niemand kan bekostig om na kerstjes te trainen, dit is waar. Dit is waar, dit is waar. There we are, just sit there and just quiet down. Maak het so daar, jou oor toe daar waar jy sit. Bring net jou hart en jou gedagte sien na toe. Lord, may what we are looking for, what is for soek van ochend, Heere, mag dit ook so wees. Mag dit ook so gesprek word, en in dier wat ook al hier van ochend gebeur, Heere, want dit wat hier gebeur, gaan oor u, het gaan oor ons nie. Elkeen van ons geluk in my hart, en ek soort tyg is hier, maar dit gaan oor u koninkryk en u wil binnen ons lewe. Ons is toch nie net geskap om, we were not merely created to merely exist, ons is nie geskap om net te bestaan, Heere, maar ons het een doel. En hierdie maand gaan het oor die doel, dit gaan oor die skywe wat ons moet maak, om ook te vind en te ontdek en te sien, waarom jy is hier bezig in my leven en in elkeen van ons leven. Ons, Heere, ons is hier vanochtend, maar ons weet, jy was lang voor ons hier. En daarom vraag ons, Heere, mag ons vanochtend inskakel en fijn luister na jy stem, dit wat jy wil sê vanochtend, mag dit wat ek spreek ook net iets wees van die koninkrijk en iets van jy wil. Dit bid ek in Jesus' naam. Amen. Greet you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit who is present and welcoming all of you. Let's stand and sing together.
Lord, as we start this sermon, I just want to give myself as an offering to you and say, mag a preek nooit stop by die preek nie, of by dit wat gesê word vanochtend nie, maar mag het uitgaan in die wereld en in rarig na die wereld aan die brand sal steek, in die wereld een verskil gaan maak. Jere, nie maar het gaan oor wie ek is, of wie ons gemeente is nie, maar wie jy is, en dat jy die licht vir die duister is, is en ook jy hoop vir hierdie land, en hoop vir die wereld. In Jesus naam, Amen. So, January, I'm starting with a theme that's going to run the whole of January, and um, the theme is, let me just go on there and get it on there with you, for you. So, the theme is donkey, donkey. So, the theme is hashtag shift happens. I think it's a good theme. Do you think it's a good theme? I think it's a good theme. So, uh, you'll see at the bottom there, hashtag shift happens. The reason I chose this theme is because... Everyone, I'm let know, never yours for him. And everyone has decided this year I'm going to be thinner, like last year I'm going to be thinner. This year I'm going to be uh, more productive, like last year I was going to be more productive. This year I'm going to work on all my relationships, like last year I worked on all my relationships. The same pattern continues every single year. We write down all these New Year's resolutions. As gaan hierdie jaar gaan as a paar gedoen. And how many of these things do we actually make happen or happens? And the interesting thing is life continues. So whether we're in tune or not, it continues. So I took this first slide and you will all resonate with this. Dalsang. New year, new me. <laughs> nee. That's sometimes how I feel like. Like I start in January and I've got all these things. And by the end of February, I feel like uh, <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to reach it. I'm not going to reach it. So today I want to preach about these lists and these resolutions we do and, and how to make them actually be useful or let them like fall into your life and, and purposely drive your life or shift your life. So who can, who can I hear you? Hierdie doelwitte, laat grond vat in my leven en laat God beheer vat. Let, let God control it. So, I hope that one of your New Year's resolutions that you wrote on there was obviously, probably, most probably faith. I hope so, because, I mean, it's probably, well, not probably, it is the most important thing in your life. 
So faith, you probably wrote down. So interesting, Jordan Peterson, when someone asked him in an interview, he said, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Would it be like Superman, Batman, or what would it be? He said faith, because then I could move mountains. So the most, most important New Year's resolution should be your faith. It should be the top of your list, faith. Now, when I say faith, what do I mean by faith? Usually, when we grow up in church, what is glo in die kerk is, hierdie jaar, as ek sê faith, dan sê ek, meer Bible lees, <laughs> read more Bible, pray more, and go to church more. Nee, that's, the, that's our little theme. Re- lees jou Bible, bid elke dag, want het gee jou kracht. En jy sal, of lees jou Bible, vergeet om te bid, en jy sal krimp, krimp, krimp. <laughs> Singular in the So read your Bible, go to church, and then pray more. This is what I want to do this year. Is that the purpose of, of what God wants you to do? To be more, reading more Bible, praying more, and then going to church more. Is that, I mean, is that your New Year's resolution? It's, it's, it, it's almost like becoming more thin. It's just, I'm just going to do this. I think faith is a lot deeper than just merely saying this is my New Year's resolution. Faith is attached to your purpose in life. You can't de- detach these two things. If you're taking the New Year's resolution, you're putting on top faith, then the first list shouldn't be a list saying prayer, uh, prayer, church, and, and uh, what was the other one? Bible reading. If you put faith on top, the first one on your list should be discovering my purpose in life. Because faith and purpose runs hand in hand. I mean, my purpose is my faith, isn't it? It's, it's like interwoven in together. You can't separate these two. So, so this morning I want to say, if your New Year's resolution is faith, then it should be your purpose, and your purpose should be your faith. I think let's start with that. So I just read in the dictionary, I said, purpose, interesting, the thing about purpose is the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. Faith, purpose, existence. What am I here for? So this year, I want to work on my faith. I want to discover my purpose. I don't want to just read Bible. I don't want to just go to church. I don't want to just pray more. I want to really discover what God wants to do with me. I mean, we're all not just going to exist this year, are we? We're going to say, okay, I just want to live this year. You know, I just want to stay here and live. No. 2024, I want my purpose to be what does God want for me? What is God's purpose for me in 2024? Now that's always a question I've, I've heard so many times in church, you know, discovering God's purpose for you in, in, in your life. And, and we have a lot of episodes or things where we think, what is God's purpose for my life? God's purpose is actually crystal clear in the Bible. God's purpose is what? Is Jesus. God doesn't have another purpose. His purpose is Jesus. Jesus is the exact example of how we should live. I mean, he says it, he says it a lot of times. I say by and I say, As jy my wil volg, dan moet jy jou kruis optaal en my volg. Marcus, you have to pick up your cross and follow me if you want to follow me. So Jesus answered, I mean, just to reinstate this, your purpose, your faith is to follow Jesus because Jesus answered in John 14, he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you will, you will know Him and have seen Him. So discovering God's will is looking through Jesus, saying, I want to follow Jesus, I want to and come to God. And then I grew up in church, and they said, listen, so you have to be more like Jesus. Nay. Nee. So, jylle moet meer, ons moet, ons moet meer soos Jesus wees. And I always sat there in church and I thought, yes, that's nice, it's a good thing to preach, wees meer soos Jesus, but I can't do what he did. I can't make bread more and make fish more and I can't really go to people and heal people and <laughs> oh, I'll share one story with you. This, this one time in my previous congregation, they asked me to come and pray for a for a baby that was really ill with RS virus and another virus combined, and it was just terrible. And they asked me to specifically come pray for healing. So I went and I I prayed, but I didn't specifically pray for healing. I just said, God, listen, if 
if it's your will, let, let your will come to this earth and let, let there be life here in, in your presence. And, it, and the baby healed. And then, well, the, as soon as I touched the baby, it, it started to change its vitals. And, and so the baby became better. And I remember them calling me saying, okay, now we're going to have a mass prayer meeting and you are going to lead it. <laughs> and I thought to myself, well, I was driving in the car on the way to the hospital. I thought to myself, Yere, you may not now drop <laughs> God, you shouldn't... We did something in the first session. We can't <laughs> drop these people in the second session. It's to be more like Jesus. It's not about me. So, I mean, in, in our language, we say, and we usually say, you are what you eat. Dietitians say that. No, you are what you eat. Yes, what you eat. What's it where in? I think some people would say, "Daikugnektu ergo sum." You are what you think, because what you eat, you become. Obviously, um, I want to put this in. Someone said, if you want to lose weight, you should put a naked picture of yourself in the fridge, <laughs> and then you would stop eating. <laughs> No, so you are what you eat, you are what you think. Or are you what you see? Which one are you? And the last one, maybe. And I want to add this. I don't know if the English is correct, but I say you are how you see. Because how you see is what you become, what you live. If you see something, you become that. Now I want to take you back to your high school years. Do you remember this picture in your high school years in biology? No, biology, in your biology class. What is that? Is it a, what is the, the red one? Is it apple? No, what's the red one? The red one is the eye and the green one is the apple. Do you remember in biology, and I'm not a biologist, so excuse me if I've got it wrong, but your eye actually sees everything upside down. No. And so your brain changes it. It's actually the, the so the second slide will explain it more. It's actually your brain with the optic nerve that changes the vision. And I sometimes think that we are seeing the world actually upside down. Because it's as if we are living upside down. We are looking at things upside down. We are not looking at things the way we should look. Maybe that's why we're not achieving our goals. Maybe that is why... We are not discovering God's purpose because we are looking upside down. We are looking at my purpose and not God's purpose for me. What do I want? And then God must be in tune to what I want, not what God wants from me. So let's say this year, faith, read Bible. No, no, no. Let's say we want to do all of that. But I want to discover my purpose. So I want to live like Jesus. Very nice sermon. What did Jesus do? I want to take one aspect of what he did and say, okay, if faith is a priority this year, I want to live like Jesus, but specifically, I want to see like Jesus. Want Jesus het anders gekyk, en dit was vir my nogal belangrik. So, I know some people don't like hunting, but I used to hunt, and I sometimes still do, but I'm pretty sure you all know a rifle and ammunition. Shooting with a rifle and ammunition is very simple. If I aim and I shoot, it follows. But interestingly, the further the target is, if I move my aim just a little bit, it's off by how far. It changes. So you can go into the dynamics of this. It's very interesting. My sister, by example, the Drino acts up through and fall. So I can't open it. Meter 100 meters, the 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 it stays the same. I'm perfect pattern. It stays the same. But actually, when you shoot further, it drops and etc. etc. But if you would take your life, your life would be like let's say like God's purpose. Your life, your eyesight is a gun and ammunition. So I want to say this year. Now you've written faith. So you've got this aim, faith. Your life is now in, in the caliber you want to, this is, I want to shoot this year. I want to shoot there. I want to go there. But I want to make sure that I'm shooting right. I'm discovering my purpose for, for what God wants for me. So I want to look like Jesus, what Jesus saw. I want to see how Jesus would look through a lens at the world. And there's three things that really stood out for me. Now, there's a lot of things how Jesus saw the world. But these things are really personal to me, to say to me, if I want to really discover God's purpose for my life this year, 
I want to look like Jesus or I want to see what Jesus saw. And the third, first thing I, I, I want to say to myself, because I've experienced this and I'm experiencing this all the time, is Jesus looked, he saw beyond suffering. And it's such an important point because we love to see suffering and we see suffering. It's, it's the so prominent in our gezichte. If you just go out on this road, you will see suffering. If you just go around the corner and you start going by the noon, you will see suffering. It's, our whole world is filled with suffering. If you go to the hospital, there's suffering. If you go to your family, maybe there's suffering. And if I want to see like Jesus saw, I have to say that there is hope beyond suffering. Jesus knew that. He knew that. In Matthew and Matthias, he predicts his death three times. But interestingly, he predicts his death and his resurrection. He predicts his death and his resurrection. So there's this whole theology of the cross. Interesting, the cross in the first few, few hundred years was the symbol of death. Because no? they used to kill people on the cross. So the first, for the first Christians to use a cross as a symbol was to say, this is for me, like there is a stool as a symbol tongue. They were killed that way. It's like using an electric chair as a symbol. That's why they chose the fish. You remember the fish sign? But later on it became the cross. And the most important thing about the cross is if you see most people's cross hanging, it is empty. Most people's crosses are empty. Why? Because the cross is empty. Because the suffering God suffered, died, and rose again. And sometimes I feel like we're living before the cross, looking at the cross saying, I'm only seeing the suffering. So when I look at 2024, I'm going to see this year of suffering. I'm going to see this year of suffering. I'm going to see this year It's not going to be a nice year because I'm going to see all the suffering happens happening to me. So the first thing I want to do is if faith and purpose aligns and I want to see like Jesus did and I, I don't want to just read Bible and pray more and go to church more. I really want to intensely change my find my purpose in life. First thing I do is I would aim my life and see how would Jesus see things. The first thing he would see is he would look beyond suffering. 2024 will not be my year of only suffering. It will also be my year of hope. It will not be my only year of failure and, and, and things not working out. It will also be my year of successes, of, of hope and joy, not only of tears and pain. It's so important. It feels like sometimes it feels like Christians, we only stick to the suffering and never to, to the hope. So, shift happens. First shift. First shift, I think, is to see beyond suffering and pain. If you really want to discover your purpose, look like Jesus or, or if I say look like Jesus, I mean see what Jesus saw. Look beyond suffering and pain. Again, thinking of this metaphor of a gun and ammunition, using that, aiming that, saying, okay, how would Jesus see the world? Jesus would see the world saying, I didn't come to this world only to suffer. I came to this world to die and rise, to give hope. The cross is empty. There's hope. Because there's eternal life. There's everything. Everything is given us. The second thing I want to focus in my life this year to find God's purpose is I want to look beyond material wealth. Because the world is constantly reminding me about material wealth. Material wealth is money and etc. What I have, what I will accumulate. And the Bible is full of this saying, does it really matter? Um, in Luke 12, where in Luke 12, where he says, it's this old man and he says he's going to retire. And he says, what are you going to do? He says, well, I'm going to build more, so I'm going to break down my silos, build more silos so I can accumulate more, so I can drink more wine and rest more. And then he says, you, you fool, what if you die tonight? And uh, there's a lot of texts in the Bible, like, for instance, Matthew 7. I put up Matthew 7 on this one. It's a teaching, so it's that, that, that main sermon about Jesus on the mount. Is the first one he says, teaching about money and possessions. Don't store up treasures on earth here. Uh, we get so caught up 
storing and, and collecting treasures. And then he says, if these treasures we collect on earth, they will merely be eaten by moths and rust will destroy them. And he will where ons now, and I can now accept work where ons by the sea blade, <laughs> where we live close to the ocean, everything rusts. The more you have, the more it rusts. <laughs> there. I don't even stay very close to the ocean, but I can see the rust. I can see it on my car. I can see it everywhere. So the more you accumulate, the more it just rusts. So make sure that you don't put all your focus and everything into material wealth and possessions. But it's not, it's not going to give you value in the long term. Jesus didn't come down to earth to say, I want to just accumulate. Actually, he said, to be rich, you have to give away. He said, your wealth depends on how much you give, not what, how much you accumulate. So, store your treasures, verse 20, store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves cannot break it and steal it. How many of you have been robbed? Or how uh, many of you have been Yeah, um, that's what happens when you have treasures on earth. So, he goes on in this text uh, in Matthew, which really was interesting for me. He said, and I was thinking about this, you know, your eye, how you see. And when he, when, he, when he preached on material wealth, verse 22 said, Your eye is like a lamp that provides light to your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. It was interesting to put material wealth on that. So the second thing was really, maybe this year, to discover God's purpose would be to see beyond material wealth, beyond what is material. Again, let's go back to the gun and ammunition. What do I want to aim? Where do I want to be? What do I want to look at? The third one is probably also one of the most difficult ones um, that I want to do this year. Jesus looked beyond revenge. This is difficult. Jesus looked beyond revenge. Jesus didn't look at revenge. Now, with, with a gun, it's easy to look at revenge. It's easy to take your cross and not aim beyond. It's easy to aim it at someone else. It's easier to say, I want to take revenge. Especially when people come and hurt you. You know, the moeilijkheid van, van revenge is... Ja, Van is, jy het nie daarvoor gaan soek nie. It, it, you didn't go look for pain. Someone did it to you or it happened. So you've got this pain inside of you and, and the most logic thing is to retaliate. But Jesus didn't come to earth to retaliate or do revenge. Jesus came to look beyond revenge. In Matthew 7 again, his biggest sermon on the mount, he says, Do not judge others and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in a friend's eye when you have a log in your own eye? Yes, the text it us all by gebruik. Nee, we've used this text so many times. Hoe kom kijk je na die splinter in 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 ander ou se oog as jy die balk in jou oog miskyk? So rather this year I want to say I want to focus on maybe you know, looking beyond revenge, looking, <clears throat> he goes a bit further and he says, how can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that uh, speck in your eye, when you can't see past the log in your own eye? How many times have we seen this? And I, I always see this with new parents, ne? new parents always want to teach, well, all uh, experienced parents always want to teach new parents how it should be done. <laughs> that is how it must be. And it is for all in families. They always say, no, you have to do it so. Or no, the child is actually hunger. No, the child will heal. The child will sleep. I say for you that. But it's not just with kids. It's with, it's with every single thing. We want to tell others how to live their life, what to do with their life, and what to, what to create. So this year, I want to look beyond that. So starting with my first shift, starting with my first shift in January, my most important shift in my personal life is, 
I've experienced and I've seen so much pain and suffering that I sometimes feel I don't want to believe anymore. And I think people in there. I think baie van ons eindigt al. Ons is baie keer op a plek waar ons sê, I had a conversation with a guy the other day and I said uh, he lost his, his sister. And I said, did faith help you through it? Or would it, have, would it have been better to not believe? And he looked at me and he said, no, definitely faith helped me. Because in some weird sense and in some weird manner, it carried me through. And I want that very same hope, that very same thing he taught me to, to, to take to, to, um, um grond te vat in my life and to say this year there will be suffering and pain but I want to look beyond it. There might be death, there might be very bad darkness but I want to look beyond it because that's what Jesus wants for me. He doesn't want me to just see pain but also the beauty. The second thing is I want in my life this year I want to look beyond material wealth. I want to look beyond worrying about tomorrow. I want to look beyond worrying about next week, next, next month, next year, what's going to happen next. Um, I, got, I want you guys to just also pray for my wife. My wife's father is, um, is very ill, he's in hospital. And she told me this morning again, she said, you know, looking at him, coming to the end of your life, what can you say? What do you really have? What do you really have at the end of your life? You only have your relationships. You don't really have anything else. Nothing else will carry you through. The third thing I really want to look at this year is I want to look, I want to look beyond revenge. So, and I get vrachtig gesê 2023. You see, <laughs> that's what happens when you just write down New Year's resolutions and you don't do it. Shift happens. Things are going to happen this year. You will be forced to look for money. You will be forced to work. You will be forced to say, what do you have? Do you have enough? Do you accumulate enough? You will be forced or you will experience pain. With that pain, you will want to take revenge. You will also maybe want to stick to the suffering and say, I don't want to create hope. When you live in these three aspects, I think you will not discover God's purpose. God's purpose for your life, faith. Instead of just reading the Bible, praying more, going to church more, if I want to take my, my purpose personally and seriously, look like Jesus, see like Jesus saw, this year, pain will not make me fall. Suffering will not break me. Can I amen from that? Mag ek amen from that? Yes, you. I want to look beyond pain and suffering will not break me. Material wealth and the accumulation of material things on earth will not make me happy. And retaliation will not set me free. And that would be one of my purpose in this life, of, of a deal for my purpose. So this January, I just, want to, I just want to go on a journey with you to say shift happens there are shifts happening in our life. And today was three aspects of shifts that are happening in our lives. Pain, wealth, revenge. And where do you want to stick to? What do you want to stick to? What do you want to be? And how did God see it? And what does God want for you? Amen. Lord, this morning I want to pray. There's only three aspects. There's actually so many aspects, but I just want to take these three because these three are very personal for me to say this is my personal purpose, which I believe you give to me this year. Is Willem, you have to look beyond pain and suffering. You have to see that the cross is empty. You have to see that pain and suffering will not destroy you. Um, and Yesaya said, so uh, this year I will maybe experience pain and suffering, but it will not break me. I will see that the cross is empty. I will see hope and I will see love and joy. This year I don't want to worry every single ba day about tomorrow. I don't want to worry about next week, next month, next year. In the Bible it clearly says, look at, look at the birds. Kijk vir die mossies. En hoeveel te meer is jy nie? 
Hoeveel te meer is jij niet dat ik vir jou sal sorg nie? Give me today my daily bread and make me happy like in Ecclesiastes it says live, eat and enjoy life today. And the third thing, Lord, I don't want to get stuck in the mud and fight with people and fight with revenge. I want to be set free. I want to be set free of all these things. And today I want to personally pray. I feel that there are some people here that are stuck in one of these three aspects. And I want to pray especially for you, saying to you this morning, God will set you free. And God is setting you free from pain, from suffering, from the struggles of life, and from revenge and pain that others cause you. I want to thank you, Lord, that you are here. I want to thank you that we can go out as new people that have been set free. All of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm just going to give a moment for reflection and for the offerings.
It is now the end of the holidays, so you must please invite me for coffee during the week, otherwise I get bored. So please invite me for some conversation. Know that the Lord has set you free from all these things, from pain and suffering, from wealth, and from every single bondage that you might have, every revenge or everything you seek. Know that the Lord is walking in front of you and to break these things, to break the darkness and turn it into light. The Lord is above, the, above you and it fights off evil, fights off all possible evil things that might penetrate you. The Lord, the tree and God is around you and is within you to be with you, to guide you, to protect you and give you strength from now until forever. Amen.